Good morning, my friends. Your old pal Jordan the Lion. It looks like we got some rain last night, and it looks like we're still getting it. That's okay. My trip is finally over. Well, not finally. Unfortunately over, I would say, but I am looking forward to getting back and seeing my dog. I love the Joster. And we actually have a vlog as soon as we get back. We are uh, getting picked up at the airport, going home, hanging out for a little bit, and then we are going to film a reunion. Yep. So... My taxi's on its way here. We're heading to the airport, Heathrow. Flying to Salt Lake City, then we're flying to Los Angeles. Then we have a long, long, long awaited reunion coming up in the end of this vlog. Days with Jordan the Lion begins now. We have arrived. This was by far one of my favorite trips that I've ever taken, and part of that was because Stefan and Amber and my friends were here. That was a great addition to the trip. And let's go find gate 29 together. I love the window seats. We got through customs. We literally have 20 minutes to catch our flight. Time to go home. I'm the wingman again. All right, we're here. Now I'm just waiting on my ride. Thanks. So we're in downtown LA tonight, which is kind of crazy because my entire history with this band is in Dayton. They were a Dayton band. I was from Troy, which was about 20 minutes away. And when I was in junior high school, my friend Adam turned me on to this band. He said, You'll, you've never heard anything like this. And really, to this day, I still haven't heard anything quite like it. They were inventive beyond belief, and they really could have and should have been what the future of music was. Um, unfortunately, the lead singer passed away and um, in a tragic accident and the band disbanded and now we're about i think he passed away in 97 and now all these years later they have a documentary about him the band is going to perform so we're going to get to hear all those great songs from uh, bonsai superstar and smack bunny baby I've really been excited about this because this is something that they tried to get off the ground the fans funded it um, the band when they were still around right before they right before Timmy passed away there was talk that Trent Reznor was going to sign them and produce them so they had a big future ahead of them and it all changed so now the fans Mark Hamill all the people that have loved them have put their money in to help making a documentary and we're gonna see it tonight and I'm a huge fan of this band I've been listening to them since I was probably in eighth grade so this is a real dream come true even though Timmy won't be here we'll still get to see some of the songs I'm hoping we get to hear some of the best from Bonsai Superstar and Smack Bunny Baby tonight now I'm told that it's already been confirmed that Fred Armisen's gonna be here and Trent Reznor look at that now this is amazing because they had a great song called Hot Metal Dobermans and that's what that shirts referring to this one's commemorating the movie and then that was another one of their songs. I am a cracked machine. So they're gonna show the movie first, the documentary first in the theater, and then the band's gonna perform a little bit. I'm excited, I'm really, really excited. Like I said, it won't be the same without Timmy because his voice was, it really was unlike anyone you've ever heard. They created their own chords, their own tunings for things. It was very avant-garde even for the 90s, but like I said, when I listen to it now, there's still nobody really touching even close to what they were doing as far as inventiveness and creativity. Here we've got people starting to file in for the show. Those are the people responsible for making the film. Well, it's pretty full and there's still people in line. Thank you all for coming out. 
out to the premiere of Brainiac Transmissions After Zero with the band playing after. Yeah! So we're done. Never happened. We've had a couple of reunion shows, but this is unprecedented where we actually show the film and then you get to ingest that and then see these guys um, play again, which is really special and tremendous, which I'm sure all of you know. So thank you for being here. And also thank you to, I'm sure, a, a, a huge portion of you guys for contributing to the Kickstarter campaign, which really made this film happen. These kind of projects really don't get made without, you know, a whole army of people behind them who are enthusiastic about them and lend their talents and their, their, their energy and, and, you know, open up their pocketbooks and, and let us, you know, do these kind of things. So thank you, because we wouldn't, we wouldn't have done this without you. So I uh, Ian Jacobs is a producer and editor of the film who is insanely talented. And you see his genius part of the screen here in a few minutes. We also have Linda Taylor in the house, maybe not in here just yet, but Tim Taylor's mom is here tonight. Aww. Aww. He was the singer. This thing would have never happened without him. I was, I was a crazy person sitting in a room with, a bo with boxes of hard drives of interviews. Uh, trying to figure out what the hell to do with this, and then Ian came on, and, and, and we did that. He actually made the movies. <laughs> a film, the music that you curate for each scene, it really makes the movie, it creates pacing, and it sort of creates the mood of every scene. And it was an incredible process to go through every in a way, Tim and the band scored this film 20 years ago. Every time you hear a needle drop, even the weird sounds and the sound design and the title sequence and everything, that's all Brainiac and that's all Tim. And they really contributed was a genius. something incredible, not just to the story, but to, they, they created the soundtrack. When you think of like Trent Reznor, The Social Network, or Mark Mothersbaugh, or all those people, that's the way I feel about what this band did for this film. That was awesome. And I didn't actually know the specifics on how he passed away, so I'll tell you after this video. Has any of like uh, the equipment or anything been displayed in museums or Rock and Roll Hall of Fame or any yeah, anybody? That's a great question. I just reached out last week. Yeah, so we did the Cleveland International Film Festival, and we, in the morning, we went to the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. I'd never been. Really awesome, and they have this room that's dedicated just to Ohio. Exactly. You know. Yeah. So, on the heels of this, we Eric reached out to them, and that is we're working on it. Awesome. We're, we're, we're yeah, certainly is deserving. You know, I have to we can facilitate that. Well, well, well! Look who came to the show. Not only is my friend Kevin here, but John's here, and. I didn't know this about John. He said he actually saw Brainiac back when Timmy was alive. Oh, hell yeah. First of all, welcome back to the stage, Jordan. Like two hours off the plane or something? Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. Yeah, I saw him back in, I think, 94, 95. And they were opening for a bunch of punk bands in um, San Diego. So what I didn't know until the movie was that um, I knew he had passed away in a car accident and I had heard that he hit the telephone pole, but what they said was that he had seen a 1972 Mercedes Benz that he wanted and so he bought it and um, when the other band members were hanging out with them, he said he opened up the trunk and the trunk was like completely rusted through and they're like, Timmy, are you sure this is safe? And he goes, yeah, it's got a few problems, but, uh, but I think it'll be okay, I'll get it fixed. And they said basically what happened was over the five days before he died, from the time he got that car, every day gas fumes were leaking in while he was out driving the car. And then finally on that fifth day, they hit a, a level where he just passed out while driving and hit a telephone pole. And, and literally it was out of the blue, no one saw it coming, it was a freak accident. Okay, this is not gonna be Sinatra. <laughs> exactly.
favorite.
Oh, what a great night. Now, like I said, I know that music's not for everybody, and a lot of you probably are saying, that's, I don't get that at all. Well, that was exactly what Timmy Taylor was going for. One of the things they mentioned in the movie was that Timmy Taylor, um, he, he actually had been playing cello and drums and guitar from the time he was like six years old. His mom was playing piano and cello from the time she was six. His dad was a famous jazz musician. So Timmy actually learned how to read music and everything from a very young age. He could play about six instruments and was in his dad's jazz band when he was in high school. So basically what he wanted to do was take conventional music, break it apart, and make it something so that people had to listen to it a couple of times to get it, and then once they got it, it was a whole new world. And so that's really what the point of Brainiac was. Um, he didn't want you to get it right away. In fact, the band members in interviews in the, the movie said, you know, we had to be careful what we said when he brought a song to us, because I remember early on he would bring a song that was perfect, and we would go, Timmy, that's so good. That That's going to be like a hit on the radio. They go, he would get this weird look on his face and go like, oh yeah? And then would like the next day come in and totally reconstructed the song, changed it. He just, he wanted it to be something that your mind had to expand to. And I think, and his mom said it and the producers that worked with him, everybody said it. it's like, even the director who made the movie said, I, I didn't even know their music when I started putting this together. But as you listen to it, every time you hear something that that in the end, after a couple of listens, you go, that is pure genius. How did he do that? How did he make that? And so I've always loved it. I'm sorry if this wasn't your cup of tea, but for all you Brainiac fans and all the people that did enjoy it, go dive into their small archive of music. It's quite incredible. I would even say start at the beginning because you hear the progression of the music and it's truly amazing. Rest in peace, Tim Taylor. And thank you, Brainiac, for the reunion. Goodbye.